Hey, welcome to another video about the electric Suzuki Sidekick conversion. Uh, today we're going to talk about regen braking. And I'll do a demonstration of the different modes this thing has and show you kind of how I set it up for uh, my purposes. So uh, let's get right to it. For starters, let's take a look at the controls. Uh, this display that I'm focused on right now is the display that comes uh, with the Hyper 9 IS uh, system that I installed in this Suzuki and from a regen standpoint it comes pre-programmed with three modes uh, and there you toggle through them with this button that says E S and H and then the indication of which mode you're in is, is an icon here that looks just like that and I think uh, the way the hyper 9 literature says it's something like E is end region s is some region and h is high region and uh, i think what that really was intended to be by the manufacturer of this display was economy sport and high performance but they reprogrammed it to to be c controlling region and not necessarily the uh, throttle gain or, or whatever else uh, but in any case that code was uh, was hard coded into the the controller when I got it, and this brings up an important point that you want to know. Uh, if you get a, a Hyper Nine IS system, uh, there's three software versions available for the the controller configuration software. Uh, one of them is the, what they call for the end user, and it has almost no configurability at all. Everything is almost everything is hard coded in that version. Uh, the next version is called uh, uh, Dealer, I believe, and that one uh, does provide some customization, uh, but it still uh, doesn't allow you to adjust the, the regen percentages in those three different modes, uh, and several other issues that, that I wanted to adjust I couldn't. Uh, so finally I actually had to contact uh, the dealer that I bought the Hyper 9 IS system from, and uh, they, after some conversation about my qualifications, uh, they agreed to provide me with the OEM version of the software, which opens up everything. And, uh, of course, you have to be careful then because there's some settings specific to your motor uh, and things like that that you don't want to adjust. But uh, as far as regen goes, um, it allowed me to adjust the percentages in these three modes. So E is still uh, zero regen, the way I've got it set up. And then if I press and hold this button, I'll get to S mode, and I believe I've got that set on about 40% regen. And then H mode, I believe is at 60% currently. Uh, so these three modes are, uh, are, well, the two that have regen are basically what you would kind of consider like one pedal driving modes that you would get in a, in a, a modern uh, you know, OEM EV. Um, the, the regen kicks in immediately when you release the throttle pedal and it's constant. There's no adjustment, or no, it doesn't change as you slow down or speed up or anything. Um, it's just a percentage of negative torque that the motor applies. Uh, so that's how those work. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the E for the moment. Uh, I wasn't satisfied with that because I particularly wanted uh, very fine control of regen, especially downhill uh, in rough road type situations. I live in the mountains and there's a lot of fairly long downhill grades. I really wanted more control than just a constant uh, setting in, a, in, a, in one of a, just a few modes. So uh, the other nice thing about the Hyper 9 IS is it has an analog input for uh, what they intended to be a brake pressure transducer, 0 to 5 volt analog signal. Uh, and ideally, I guess in their mind, you would connect that to uh, the, the brake hydraulic system with a pressure transducer. Send, and that would send a signal to your controller, which would then modulate regen based on how hard you push the brake pedal. Uh, but again, I wanted to be able to control regen uh, separately from the brakes. Uh, I didn't want to have to use any friction brakes at all to do my regen. So uh, I found, at, uh, I think it came from Summit Racing, uh, basically just a 0 to 5 volt potentiometer knob 
with uh, 12 position detents. So you can see right now it's in number six. I can turn it all the way down to zero or all the way up to 12. And this is what I'm using to send that signal to the controller for the regen. And this is only active whenever the mode here is in E, so the, the constant regen is turned off, then this becomes the regen control. Uh, what's interesting is these modes, if you have regen turned on in S or H mode, uh, it's immediate. As soon as you let off the throttle, you get full regen at whatever setting it's at. However, this one has a delay. So if I release the throttle pedal uh, in any of these settings, there's a delay, kind of a, a ramp up delay as regen kicks in. And I think that's intended to be uh, something to, to keep it smoother, more like traditional braking. Um, and at first I was a little disappointed with that, but then I realized, especially as we got into slick roads uh, last winter, that it's actually a benefit because uh, if your negative torque kicked in completely immediately, uh, it could throw you into a slide on a slick road where this this way with the delay, it actually is much smoother. And uh, within just a few seconds, you get up to the full region uh, torque and it slows you down well. So uh, enough talk. Let's get to uh, demonstration. I think I'll start with no region at all going down this gravel road hill ahead of us here. Uh, it it kind of goes down the hill and turns. Um, and you'll see what happens. And then we'll try uh, one of the constant regen modes. And then I'll show you how the adjustable, adjustable regen works. Okay, for the first test, uh, actually for all the tests, we're going to be in low range because this is a gravel road. We need to go slow and regen is more pronounced in low range uh, just because the torque is multiplied, of course. Uh, so we'll start with zero regen on the knob and zero regen on the constant setting. And uh, you can see how we roll down the hill. So go ahead and put it in forward and off we go. So get to the top edge of the hill here and I'll let off the throttle. And there's absolutely no negative torque. And we're rolling away. And I'm going to have to apply some friction brake because we're just a little faster than I want to go down this hill. So I'm friction braking all the way at this point. Uh, all the way down to the bottom of the hill. So it took friction brakes from probably one third of the way down the hill to the rest to keep from going faster than I wanted to. So we'll go ahead and head back up. By the way, if you're watching the speed on the display here, if you can see that, uh, it's reading about double what we actually are doing because that speed is based on motor RPM and it's calibrated for high range gear. And because I've got the transfer case in low range, it's, uh, it's got about a two to one reduction. Okay, let's pull a U-turn. And for the second test, we'll go ahead and put the controller in the constant 40% regen mode. Uh, that's the S mode there. And we'll see how that operates. So now I'm in forward. Let me go ahead and take off. And coming to the brink of the hill, I'll go ahead and let off the throttle. And I have some negative torque now. It's definitely not running away like it was before. Uh, haven't used any friction brakes yet. Still no friction brakes. Uh, but now it's slowing down more than I want it to. But I don't have any adjustment. There's nothing I can do here to go faster other than hit the throttle again and then it takes off because there's no regen with the throttle. So uh, not bad. Uh, certainly if you wanted sort of a set it and forget it type situation, that would work okay. 
Uh, but I wasn't satisfied. So uh, we'll go back up the hill and we'll try it again using the uh, adjustable regen based on the knob that I installed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn off the constant regen. And now I'm going to put this knob on number 6 of 12, position number 6. That's about 50% regen. And we'll try that to start with, but then I'll show you how I can adjust it as we go. All right, so take it off again. Coming up to the brink of the hill, I'll release the throttle. Now at first we don't have any, there's a little delay, but now regen's kicking in and we're slowing down more, you can tell, than we were before significantly. So now I'm, I'm down to, uh, well, half of that speed, so about six miles an hour, five miles an hour. If I want to slow down even more, I can turn regen up even more. There's number nine. At this low of a speed, it isn't going to make a huge difference, but let's say I want to go faster. Now I can turn it down to one or two. It releases a bunch of that negative torque. Now I'm going a little faster. And when I get to the bottom of the hill, maybe I want to slow down, maybe even come to a stop, so I turn it back up. There's number seven. And on flat ground, this region will bring us to a stop. Uh, one thing that you'll find, at least with this system, Hyper 9 system, is that on uh, downhill, Regen will never completely stop you. It will just bring you to a very, very low speed uh, because it seems to be proportional to the speed, at least when you get down to a very low speed. So anyhow, this is what I normally use is the adjustable knob uh, because there's so many different hills around here that are different, you know, grades. Uh, I just need the ability to adjust that and change the rate at which I'm slowing down. So. Uh, hopefully that was in, uh, interesting, give you a little more information about how that's set up. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have questions. Thanks for watching.